So you've been trawling through YouTube trying to find a good guide on how to achieve your first orbit in RP1, only to come across some scrub whose video is completely outdated and pretty bad. Ooh. Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and worry not because in this video I'll give you 10 alternative first launch vehicles for RP1. A quick hop into the R&D building to show you the nodes I'll be using. Not all the vehicles I go over will require all these, but I'll mention that for each specific rocket. There absolutely will be some caveman designs. All of the craft files here will be available to download from my Discord. Link in the description if you want to steal these. I'm not judging, your grandmother might though. One last word before getting into the list. My channel recently got accepted for memberships. If you fancy supporting my work and getting a badge by your name on video comments or or live chats in streams and premieres, as well as additional perks, check out the link in the description. Anyway, rockets. A classic, one LR-79, one AJ-10, and one Aerobee set to the AJ-1027 config. This is a staple for getting your first orbit in RP-1, and is essentially the design from my last video, albeit improved a bit. Coming in at 1,798 funds, this is a pretty middle of the range design in terms of cost, and with a mass just shy of 60 tonnes will need you to upgrade your starting launch pad. Aluminium Stringer tanks are used to give this just over 10,500 metres per second of Delta V. This vessel, as with many of the vehicles on this list, but not all, cannot utilise Mechjeb's ascent guidance. As wonderful as that is, it really does not agree with unguided stages. To fly this, I use the surface mode on Smart ASS, pitching over until I hit 45 degrees at around 20 kilometers, before then balancing my apogee with what I want my final perigee to be. This rocket does utilize hot staging in order to overcome ullage issues, so a few seconds before the LR-79 runs out of juice, I fire the AJ-1037, and before releasing the Space B, I spin up the remainder of the craft slightly to maintain attitude upon releasing the final satellite. After burning the engine to its rated time, the satellite ends up in a 275 by 7,900 kilometer orbit, with over a day of electric charge and cosmic ray science stored internally. This is more than capable of completing the first scientific satellite contract. The standard, it's a staple for a reason and will last you potentially all the way to orbital returns. I couldn't do a first launch vehicle video without including my favourite agency, Australian Research and Space Exploration, or ARS for short, known of course for launching everything upside down. This vessel is essentially the exact same as the standard, just with the stages going from top to bottom, which in order to function had to have two of every engine on each stage. This made the vehicle much more expensive, in fact over double the cost at 5,046 funds. Not quite the most expensive vehicle on this list, but it's certainly getting there. There. Being much heavier at 90 tons will also require a larger pad to launch this from. That's right, the expenses just keep on stacking. In order for this vessel to actually work, you need to not only just hot stage, but also decouple the previous stage a couple of seconds early, in order for you to not explode your precious load all across the sky. Let us save that for where it's actually needed. Honestly, there are no upsides to this vessel over the previous one, except for maybe the fact it has 200 meters per second more delta V. Not really sure what you could do with that, other than maybe throw some more science on, but this will already is capable of having all the early game science on board when flown the correct way. Realistically, there is absolutely no way you'd ever want to fly this vehicle as a first orbit vehicle. Unless, of course, you think sanity is overrated and you want to go for an Australian-only playthrough. Please send help. The first American satellite launcher, putting Explorer 1 into orbit on the 1st of February 1958. This vessel comes in at 1,885 funds, making it slightly more costly than the standard. However, in order to get the Delta V to make this design work, integral tanks need to be used, giving it a much bigger upfront cost. One benefit of this design is not needing to unlock 56 to 57 orbital rocketry, as the Redstone engine is found in early rocketry, with the A6 upgrade from basic rocketry being used in this vehicle. The the rocket comes in at just over 24 tonnes, so is considerably lighter than the previous two entries, but will still require an upgrade from the starting launch pad. Unless, of course, you cheat by draining the fuel tanks and let them fill up on the pad. Flying this design can be a little difficult, as only the first stage is guided. After the redstone is spent, if your predicted apogee is still in the atmosphere, you're gonna have to try again. About 30 seconds before hitting apogee, I make sure that the final unguided stage is pointed towards my prograde vector, before once again spinning up the vessel to maintain attitude. No while is required this time, however, as the Baby Sergeant stages, being SRMs, don't require that. At only 250 kilometers by 900 kilometers, this is not enough to complete the first scientific satellite contract, and neither does it have the science or the electric charge internally to remain in orbit for a day and transmit cosmic ray data. The Juno, nice and light, and will get you first artificial satellite, but all in, not a great early LV. 
Another early US design, this time even lighter than the Juno. A major advantage of this rocket is you do not need to upgrade your starting pad. Coming in at only 10.4 tons, this rocket falls way under the requirements. Once again though, integral tanks are needed in order to get this to a decent orbit, so the money you save on the pad unfortunately will need to be spent elsewhere. At 1,560 funds, this vehicle is the cheapest rocket on this list, so it absolutely will not break the bank. And has a decent amount of Delta V at 9,553. The Vanguard is split into three separate stages, the first utilizing an X405 engine, the second an AJ-1037, and finally to provide the kick it needs, a GCRC solid rocket motor. Yet again, as this has an unguided kick stage, no ascent guidance for this vehicle. But as with the standard, having a couple of guided stages make this a relatively simple flight path to follow. If I'd have flown this better, it absolutely would fulfill all requirements of the scientific satellite contract, including all the necessary experiments and then some more added on. If this was a tier list style video, I certainly would be placing this into S tier. No pad upgrade, the cheapest option and also capable of fulfilling both starting satellite contracts, the Vanguard can do it all. Can't decide on a country to play an RP-1? Then this is a launch vehicle for you. This design, the complete mix, does not have a single stage shared between nations. The first stage, the Russian RD-103, a solid engine that you may have been flying since the sounding rocket grind. It's a great engine series to use for the 3000 km downrange contract and is also pretty good for some cavemen first orbits. The second stage, the British Gamma 201, the engine used for the Black Knight ICBM, better than the Stenter because this engine can actually gimbal. And finally, for the third stage, once again, the GCRC. Honestly, this American solid rocket motor is great for early kick stages, and combined with the first two of this rocket, give the vessel 10,239 meters per second of delta V. This rocket gets away with using only conventional structure tanks set to aluminium stringers, but comes in quite costly at 2,674 funds. Weighing 59 tons, you'll also need to upgrade the pad. To be honest, if you're going for a vehicle like this, probably best to just stick with the standard. Clearly, without any shadow of a doubt, the best vehicle on this entire list. Couldn't possibly be biased in any way, shape or form since this just so happens to be nigh on identical to my first orbital rocket in For All Kerbal Kind. This vehicle will set you back 2,481 funds, but once again can make do with only conventional tanks, and using them will give it a fairly respectable 10,197 meters per second of delta V, which I know for a fact can get you all the way to orbital returns. Throw on an actual blue streak rather than a single RZ2 variant and you can even go all the way to early lunar missions. A major disadvantage, however, is the need to wait until 1958 orbital rocketry has unlocked, as all three engines used on this vehicle, the RZ-2, the Gamma-8 and the Gamma-2 are gated behind that tech node, so not really one to be rushing out. However, despite this, at least when you do unlock the tech, you can make a giant flying lipstick. This is the first vehicle on this list though that you can use Mech Jeb Ascent Guidance to get to orbit. Having no unguided stages, it's perfect for that, and it means you can go put the kettle on, get yourself a nice warm cuppa and blast God Save the King on repeat whilst you watch your Mech magnificent rocket make its way to space. A great rocket, if you want to be lazy, but the gated tech means you might be waiting a while to fly this design. The Soviets definitely don't do things in half measures, and this rocket is certainly no exception. Based on the R-7 vehicle that launched the world's first satellite Sputnik on the 4th of October 1957, this is the heaviest vehicle on the list, coming in at a whopping 280 tons. You can forget about the 60 ton and the 150 ton presets, you're going to need to go straight for the 350 ton launch pad, or you know, build your own size since that's now a feature. Despite being so much heavier than any of the other vessels, it really doesn't offer all that much more capability, and getting a Sputnik sized object a lower Earth orbit is only really just achievable. If you want some actual numbers, it can take about 1.6 tons to low Earth orbit, which may be enough for early lunar missions, but at what cost? Talking of cost, this rocket is the most expensive on the list. At 6,015 funds, tanks used are conventional, so tooling shouldn't be too bad. However, as this uses the largest tank diameter out of these rockets, the costs can end up running away. Once again, Mech Jeb Ascent Guidance works, so as soon as you've built it, you can let it fly itself and go do more important things, such as spreading the Communist Manifesto 
manifesto, or throwing a revolution. The rocket uses four RD-107 engines attached to an RD-108 core stage. All are ignited at launch, and the core will burn until orbit is achieved. These engines receive many upgrades throughout the tech tree, so getting them early on and flying them frequently will definitely net you a lot of test data, and hopefully improve reliability quite dramatically. All things considered, the R-7 is not the best of options to get to first orbit, just needing to buy the launch pad alone will set you back a considerable amount. Plus, the RD series of engines cost quite a deal more than their American counterparts. However, if you're going for a Russian-only playthrough, you don't really have that many different options, at least not to begin with. What happens when you unlock 1958 orbital rocketry, remove the RD-107 boosters, and replace them with an RD-105 upper stage? I don't know, that's why I was asking. Well, lucky for me I have this script, and it so turns out you get the Russian, but smaller. The first stage of this remains mostly the same as the previous vessel, aluminium stringer tanks with an RD-108 engine. It is, however, made drastically smaller in order for the engine to provide enough thrust to get it off the ground. The second stage is, as mentioned before, just an RD-105, also using aluminium 2 tanks, and these two combined give the vehicle 9,700 meters per second of delta V with a 300 kilogram payload. This vessel theoretically could use Mechjeb's ascent guidance to make it to space, having two stages with full control. However, every time I attempted it, the RD-105, with its abysmal gimbal, would spin drastically out of control when the stage decoupled. So it turned out the only way I could get that to not happen was to once again fly this with the surface settings on Smart ASS. If you fancy downloading this craft, give it a try. I'd like to see if anyone can get it to orbit with guidance. This rocket costs only 1,742 tons, making it one of the cheaper ones to fly. Tooling isn't too expensive either, using only conventional tanks. But this will require an upgraded launch pad, and of course, once again, waiting until 1958 orbital rocketry. I'm sure many of you have much better Russian early rockets that you definitely want to share, but more on that later. I personally rarely go down the Russian route. So these last two vehicles have been somewhat new ground for me to cover, but the experience has left me thinking that most of the time, it's better to stick to the American tech tree. Want to get to orbit, but don't want pesky science getting in your way? Then try out the Complete Caveman, a rocket for the 60-ton pad that can be picked up before grabbing the 10-cost material science node. Costing 2,171 funds, this makes it a round average price for a launch vehicle, and it gets near enough 10,000 meters per second of delta V. The main advantage of this, though, is how early you can build it. Not having to research the 10-point material node can lead you to either focusing on the science node first for faster scientific satellites, or just straight up blitzing first orbit to get that huge influx of cash. This design, however, is pretty weird to say the least, and almost puts the complete mix to shame. The first stage comprises of two LR-89 Atlas booster engines set to their default config. This is quite a short burning stage, so hot staging is definitely necessary to stop the next stage from having a bit of a flop. Speaking of, stage two comprises of the Scud engine. This lasts a little while longer, burning for about a minute and a half. Finally, the last two stages are stacked Aerobees. Yes, this rocket is is completely cursed, and one thing I've not really touched upon in this video, but that will definitely affect this rocket and the last one on this list, is reliability. Having multiple engines like this means there is a much greater chance of failure. I tend to prefer one engine per stage designs, but sometimes you've just got to make really wonky launch vehicles. This rocket, due to the rapid rate at which you go through stages, is reasonably tricky to fly, definitely one of the hardest on this list, and because of that, I was only able to place this in a 145 by 90 thousand kilometer orbit. A good design for rapid first orbit, but if you want to wait out for some tech, there's definitely better ways to go. Because where else can you be launching something that looks like the Saturn V in 1957 other than RP-1? Saving the best vehicle till last, this is something you would absolutely never want to fly as your first orbital vehicle. The only reason why I included it on this list was I wanted to see if it was possible to make a launch vehicle out of first orbital tech that somewhat resembles the Saturn V. And now with the inclusion of Katniss's parts and them being made procedural, you absolutely can do that. A most unconventional design with five X405 engines on the first stage, five AJ-1037s on the second, another solo AJ-1037 on the third, and then finally a fourth stage comprising of a single Aerobee. Going back to reliability, the early AJ-10s are a nightmare to work with, and having six of them on a single rocket is bound to cause issues. I was flying these on sims with failures turned off, so I dread to think just how bad this would be to fly for real. The rocket, despite its apparent size, is on the lighter end of the list, coming in at 43 tons. However, it's really not that capable at all, and can barely get anything to orbit. 
it, but it can. And that's really all I wanted to know. Once all told, it comes in at 4,364 funds, making it a little on the expensive side and certainly not cheap. Despite having failures turned off whilst filming this, I still had to launch this vehicle a couple of times. It's not that fun to fly, and the separation between the S1C and the S2 stage is janky at best. But I did still manage to get it to orbit, and that's the important thing. Not if it's any good at doing that, not if it's efficient, not if it's cheap, no. Just getting the budget Saturn V to orbit was really my only goal for this video. I'd highly recommend putting this vehicle where it belongs, on a fire inside an active volcano, with a nuclear warhead moments away from blasting it to atoms. And that is all the vehicles on this list. Some quite clearly are much better suited for first orbital, and some are quite frankly downright ridiculous. I'm sure a lot of people watching also probably have much better caveman designs, and if that's the case, please do feel free to share them. Never really been one for doing janky first orbital vehicles, and coming up with the caveman design here was certainly interesting. Before this video finishes though, I want to mention I am considering making a tier list style of video, rating designs that you, the community, sent to me. They can be any tech level and any style. I'll be rating them on criteria such as looks, payload capability, cost per kilogram to low earth orbit, and straight up whether I like you or not. If you want to see this video made and want to take part, head on over to my Discord where I'll be creating a channel for craft files to be uploaded. In order to make it work, I request only vehicles from the most recent RP1 Express install, that way it will be much more of a manageable task to get all the vehicles to load. But that's it for the end of this video. A big thanks to all my patrons and supporters, and until the next one, I have been Kanasa and I will see you later.